Middle school science, phase changes in matter. How many states of matter are shown in this picture? Did you say three or did you say four? Well, let's look. There's liquid in the ocean, gas in the air and clouds, solids on the ground and in the mountain. But what about that lightning? Lightning is actually representing the fourth state of matter plasma. So plasma does occur on Earth, it's just not as common as, let's say, liquids or solids or gases. Being able to identify the states of matter is good, but a substance can change from one state or phase of matter to another. So let's look at how they change from one phase to another. It's all about temperature. All matter can change its phase or state. A change in temperature can cause changes in phase. The higher temperature, the more kinetic energy in the particles. When the kinetic energy in the particles reaches a certain point, the substance may change from one phase to another. So let's look at some phases. We'll add some heat or thermal energy until it changes phases. So bring on the heat. Starting with solid, going to liquid. This is called melting. Melting is when a solid substance changes or melts into a liquid. The temperature at which the substance melts is called its melting point. It's also known as its freezing point. This image shows a piece of gallium in a person's hand. Gallium's melting point is so low that the heat from your body will actually begin to melt it. The particles inside a solid are in motion, but they tend to vibrate around the same spot. As the particles gain energy when heat is added, they begin to slide past one another or flow and bump into each other. Liquid going to gas. Boiling is when a liquid substance changes or boils into a gas. The temperature at which a substance boils is called its boiling point. The particles inside the liquid are in motion. They flow around each other and bounce off one of each other in the walls of the container of the liquid. As particles gain energy when heat is added, they begin to speed up and collide more often, which increases the pressure as well. There is also evaporation. Evaporation is when a liquid substance changes or evaporates into a gas. Unlike boiling, however, the temperature does not have to reach boiling point for a substance to evaporate. It is a slow process that can happen on its own. Think about if you leave a glass of water in your bedroom and forget about it for a week. What happens when you go back to it? What's it look like? The particles in a liquid that are affected by evaporation are just at the surface of the liquid. They can gain energy from collisions at the surface with particles in the air, and as they do, they begin to speed up a little bit more and collide more often, eventually gaining enough energy to jump out of the liquid and become gas. Now let's look at solid turning straight into a gas, skipping the liquid stage entirely. This is called sublimation. Sublimation is when a solid substance changes or sublimes directly into a gas. This usually happens when a solid is brought to a temperature above its boiling point. The particles gain energy when heat is added and they begin to speed up until they escape into a gaseous form. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Since carbon dioxide's boiling point is well below room temperature, carbon dioxide sublimes. Okay, let's go the other way. Let's see what happens if we take heat away and cool things down a bit. Let's start with gas going to liquid. This is condensation. Condensation is when a gas substance changes or condensates into a liquid. The temperature at which a substance condensates is also the same as its boiling point. The particles in the gas are in rapid motion, but as it loses the heat, the particles lose kinetic energy and the particles begin to stick together on the surface. With enough particles sticking together, you start to see droplets clinging to surfaces. Now let's look at liquid turning into solid, which is known as freezing. 
Freezing is when a liquid substance changes or freezes into a solid. The temperature at which a substance freezes is the same as its melting point. The particles in the liquid are in motion, but as it loses heat, the particles lose kinetic energy and the particles begin to slow down and get closer together until they are tightly packed and vibrating in place, making it the substance a solid. What about gas directly to solid? That's deposition. Deposition is when a gas changes or deposits directly into a solid. This usually happens when a gas is brought to a temperature below its freezing point or melting point. The particles in the gas are moving rapidly, but the temperature slows them down until they are only vibrating in place and are tightly packed together. Seen here with iodine, the fourth kind of matter. Okay, so what about plasma? Gases can change into plasma and plasma into gases if the conditions are right. Ionization is when a gas changes into the plasma state. This happens when a substance gains so much energy that the electrons are freed from their atoms. So the gas becomes a mix of free electrons and ions, atoms with an electric charge. And we call this mixture plasma. To see and hear an example of plasma, pay attention during the next thunderstorm. Lightning is an example of plasma, and the thunderclap you hear is actually the sound of the electrons being freed. Okay, so what about plasma turning into gas? Well, that's deionization. It's also known as recombination. It's the reverse of ionization when plasma then changes into a gas. So you gotta cool things way down. Summary over phase changes. There are four main kinds of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Matter will change states when temperature is changed enough. Solids melt into liquids which can boil or evaporate into gases which can then ionize into plasma. Plasma can deionize into gases which condensates into liquids which can freeze into solids. The diagram here shows the name of all of the phases and the phase changes in between each stage.